and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Chakodash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, and many salutations unto you elect across the four ones of this earth, fulfilling your lot in all truth and all sincerity. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch. And I'm coming to you all with another lesson which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And Lord willing, this lesson here will be edifying unto the flock. And I wanted to just talk about something that just sparked my mind. I was doing a little bit of reading today. Just uh, read a tad bit of Zephaniah. And when you read the book of Zephaniah, the first chapter, which Zephaniah, when you do a little bit of research on him, he was one of the prophets that you can read about in the Old Testament, all right, namely in what's called the Tanakh, which are the books of the prophets. And so-called scholars will call him a minor prophet, which myself personally, I don't believe none of them are minor prophets, but I get the concept of why people call certain prophets major and minor due to the size of their books and the meaning of their message. And it was all, it was all set up by the Heavenly Father to be that way. But when you read these prophecies of these prophets, they're very major prophecies, which makes up what we have today. Okay. As our Lord Yahweh Shai said in Revelation 19 and 10, the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So in order to truly have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, you have to have the spirit or breath, because that's what the word spirit means in Revelation 19 and 10. You have to have that breath an understanding of the prophecies and in order to understand those prophecies you have to go to the prophets in order to understand that which cuts the whole the old testament's done away with the argument with christianity because lo and behold they'll say that and they'll read or you know they'll perceive themselves to be studiers and followers of the apostle paul and those disciples and such but all those great men read from the scrolls which is the Old Testament, all right? Even when you read 2 Thessalonians 2, in order to fully understand what the Apostle Paul was talking about, you have to know the breakdowns and the prophecies to understand what the Apostle Paul was talking about. And this lesson is not even just going into that, all right? Just that thought came to mind, but namely, as I said earlier, I'm gonna be going into a part of the prophet Zephaniah. And as you see here on the screen, it says, Day of Judgment on Judah, okay? And Judah is the so-called Negro. Back in the ancient world, in the days of Zephaniah, he prophesied during the Babylonian captivity. All right, he pro he was more so contemporary with, with prophets like uh, Jeremiah, prophets like Ezekiel, and so forth. He was contemporary with those individuals. So when you read those men, you find out the pattern of a judgment that's being given unto Israel. And when you go into this judgment. It goes into why the Lord, and not even just with Zephaniah, but just generally speaking with these prophets. When you read their books, you understand why the Heavenly Father judged our people the way that he did. Okay, and you see remnants of that here today. Even as it's written of in Ecclesiastes, the uh, first chapter, the thing that hath been is that which shall be. And there is no new thing under the sun. So you see a pattern of behavior of the wicked works of the Israelites from the Old Testament and even trickling into the New Testament when our Lord Yahweh Shai came on the scene, who the world calls Jesus Christ. And you even see that here within the world of Israel today. A lot of guys are out here that glorify themselves, glorify their apparel, glorify their outward look. And those of us that have understanding, uh, we, we, we have a general understanding on why, all right, even when you read it in 1 Peter, the second chapter, it makes mention that you just had certain individuals that was meant to stumble at Yahweh Shai. And when you read that, it goes into how they were even appointed as such. Okay, you got the righteous Israelites and then you got the wicked of our own people. Just as it's been before, is that which shall be as I quoted earlier. Now, as I was reading Zephaniah earlier, just uh, you, you have your certain days where you don't know what you're going to read. So you just start reading something. In hopes and, and that a lesson sparks up on something that you've learned before and um i stumbled across this in zephaniah the first chapter in the fourth verse and i'm gonna go into this here and i'm gonna read down to verse eight and hopefully it's edifying unto the flock 
but it's ultimately it's going into the idolatrous works and the different practices that's tied to it and certain of these practices we still see here today not knowing that it stems from some type of ancient root so this is the book of Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 4 and it says I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from his place in the name of the Camerims I keep that word in mind because that's what we're going to talk about today in the name of the Camerims with the priests so you see here it referenced the scriptures reference how the Lord is going to cut off the remnant of Baal and what this is going into these are Israelites that were followers and worshipers of Baal and you had a lot of Israelites that existed back then that stopped serving the living power or they would secretly serve Baal and act like they served the living power all right you can even read about it in the book of Ezekiel which again is contemporary to Zephaniah you can read about this in Ezekiel the eighth chapter and it goes into how the Lord allowed the prophet Ezekiel to see the odious wicked works that the leaders of Israel was doing namely those that was of the priesthood that pretended to be true priests of the Lord but really they were of the remnant of Baal this is the book of Ezekiel chapter 8 and let's start at a good point yeah I'm gonna start at the uh, Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 16 and it reads and he brought me into the inner courts of the Lord's house and behold at the door of the temple of the Lord between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east and they worshiped the sun toward the east so here's an illustration of Israelite priests that were supposed to be priests of the Heavenly Father but really they had their backs turned toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the Sun and not only that but they worshiped the Sun okay and when you continue to read it it says then he said unto me hast thou seen this O son of man is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they have commit here for they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger and lo, they put the branch to their nose, which the branch to their nose is also tied to idolatrous practices. Okay, let's look this up really quick. Okay, I'm going to research this quite a while back. But I believe this is signified, if I can remember it, going into strange incense that they would burn to other gods. Because a lot of those incense came from a branch or wood and such. And it's not that the actual wood is bad. The Lord created the wood for whatever purpose it was. But you had a lot of Israelites that was burning incense, excuse me, that was burning incense. I almost said interest. It was burning incense, incense to unfamiliar gods. Okay, there's a incense that comes to mind and I'm not saying this was burn, you know, it's wicked to burn this incense, but you have um, a particular incense that's called oud. Another name for it is sandalwood. And that's just an example out of many, but in order to get that entrance that incense in its uh, powdered form, you scrape you scrape at the bark, you scrape the tree branch and there's a bark that falls down and that's what gets burnt and causes that smell. So when you go into that, namely, the branch to their nose, ultimately, that's tied to idol worship. Again, it's not necessarily, it's not wicked to burn incense and smell it, all right? There's plenty of incenses out here, okay? But when it's tied to some type of strange god, then that's the problem. And back in the ancient world, every time a particular god was worshipped, there was a practice that was tied to that. You'll find certain scriptures where it mentions how they leapt across the threshing floor. That was a practice that was done to worship the god, da the, the false god Dagon, and so forth. Even over here today, you read it in Revelation, the 13th chapter, where it goes in to the practices that's done to, to, to show forth that you belong to the beast system. All right, and that's bowing down unto the image of the beast and taking his mark, which is a practice to show forth that you are subjugating yourself unto this god. And ultimately, I'm using this as an example to show forth that there are 
practices that are done to promote idolatrous worship. And when you read it back in Zephaniah, the first chapter, it makes mention here in verse four, I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place in the name of the Camerims with the priests. Okay. And I believe I read, I just read in the part a second ago where it said that they had the branch in their nose. All right. But anyway, that's all tied to idolatrous practices. And this is the remnant of Baal. That's right. I was in um, Ezekiel, the eighth chapter. So this is back in Ezekiel 8, Salakia. But I'm going to read that again. And it says in Ezekiel 8, the end of 17, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will also deal in fury. Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And thou, though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. So this is going into the wicked customs that those that was claiming to be actual priests of the Lord was doing. All right. And just as Ezekiel was um, was um, sent unto spy out through the spirit, these works that was being done. The Lord is doing the same thing with the actual with these prophets, the actual prophets here within these last days. And it's the spirit that you see a lot of these, um, you know, you had. The IUIC that just got into that scuffle with the ISUPK just um what what day was that? Uh Saturday. And just earlier today, you got what General Yohanna from the ISUPK that that did a, a, a lesson going I don't even want to call that a lesson. But he did a, a speech going into what took place and it wasn't nothing but rambling that was had. And it's the same concept with these other guys, the IUIC. Alright, it's a lot of confusion that's going on. All right, you don't really see prophecy coming from these guys, but a lot more confusion. And again, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because it's only given unto the true prophets to prophesy anyway. Okay, but I, I brought that up to say you saw examples back then, and you see these examples here today. Those that proclaim themselves to be uh, priests of the Lord, those that claim themselves to be sent by the Heavenly Father. Again, you even have General Yohanna that will proclaim himself to be the third, a third under heaven. But when you look at their works and their conversation and such, it's completely against the Heavenly Father. All right. Again, just as you had ancient Israelites back then, that was in the same spirit. And as the Lord used Ezekiel to spy out the works of those wicked and evil men, the prophets are here today doing the same exact thing through the Holy Spirit. All right. So jumping back to the book of Zephaniah. Now we're going back to Zephaniah. Okay. Chapter one, verse four. And it made mention, I will cut off mine hand upon Judah and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut out the remnant of Baal from his place and the name of the Camerims with the priests. Just as Zephaniah and Ezekiel were contemporary prophets together, they knew that there was wickedness that was being done from those that called themselves priests. And there was odious, idolatrous works that was being done in the temple of the Lord. And the Heavenly Father set out prophets, sent out prophets, excuse me, to call these things out. All right. And that definitely is indeed the remnant of Baal, just as you see guys out here today in the same spirit, gloating and boasting in themselves and their numbers. All right. But when you go into this word Camerums here in Zephaniah 1 and 4, let's get it. And you'll have the word Kamar in the Hebrew. And when you go into that, it says priest or idolatrous priests. So the Lord said he would cut off the idolatrous priests from Jerusalem, which as it happened before back then, it's also going to happen here today. Even in the book of first Peter, the fourth chapter. In the 17th verse, it says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the most high and the house of the most high is the nation of Israel. But the house of the most high ultimately starts with the priesthood. Okay, just as in the ancient world, you had the house of the Most High or the temple of the Lord. And that's what all the sacrifices and such was being done at. Just as we read in the example of Ezekiel 8, what the priests or those wicked priests was doing in the house of the Most High. And when you read that whole chapter, all right, I just read one example, but in the whole chapter, it goes into it in detail how those chief men were worshiping idols. All right. So it says for the time. It's come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. So the Lord is going to visit those that know that they're Israelites, those that proclaim themselves to serve the Lord. He's going to touch them first. 
and it says and if it first begin at us what shall the end be to them that obey not the gospel all right so we know the lord is also searching jerusalem with candles as it's written of in the book of zephaniah the first chapter as well so every Israelite that's out here, whether you're doing good or whether you're doing evil, is ultimately being searched out. But those that are performing wickedness are going to be exposed for the things that they're doing and all the odious works that they do with their hands and the things that they say with their mouth. A lot of blasphemies, a lot of uh, false accusations. Oh, yeah, especially that. <laughs> when you look at the world of Israel, one thing that you notice about a lot of these other camps is they love to throw false accusations around again even in that that uh that, that video general yahana did he kept calling uh nate and the iuic the you know i'm not gonna say the word but the f-bomb another name for what we call them moles which we don't really care about the iuic and all that we know that they're wicked okay but i'm just using that example to show how freely a lot of these guys throw these terms out not really considering the words that they're saying okay you got people that call us the R word, grapists, when there's never been anybody amongst us that's been accused of that. But they throw that out freely. That's been a, a stigma that we've received for quite some time, you know, just based on the doctrine. All right. And the law, really, the doctrine, of course, but the law going into what takes place if a man does lay with a woman without the proper doings. OK, that's all we talk about. But they say we're grapists. They call us another word and the list goes on and on and on. All right. But it makes sense why the Lord is going to visit these people. They're proclaiming themselves to be holy to now, but really deep down, they're performing wickedness. Just as the Camerums were performing wickedness in the book of Zephaniah, the first chapter. Now, jumping back to Zephaniah 1, because I went into that word, I'm going to read a little bit. And there's something that's going to stand out. And there's an apparel that's tied to it which a perilous clothing so when you continue to read in zephaniah 1 and 5 it says and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops and them that worship and that swear by the lord and swear by malcolm so you had israelites that was out here that would worship the host of heaven all right which the host of heaven right here is ultimately talking about the stars okay that's why it referenced upon the housetops and you still have that here today, the different zodiacs and such. All you know, right. And a lot of people are into that. OK, especially these women that are out here, namely the Israelite women. They've adopted that and they swear by it to this day. OK, they won't consider a mate to be suitable just based on how the signs are. Thus the stars are aligned in the sky. And again, that's ultimately tied to wicked works, idolatry. All right. And it says, and them that worship and swear by the name Yahweh, and that swear by Malcolm. And Malcolm, I believe Malcolm goes back to uh, Molech, if I'm not mistaken. But let's get it. It says, the God of the Amorites, yet the great king Milcom, the God of the Amorites and Phoenicians, to whom some Israelites sacrificed their infants in the valley of Hinnom, also Molech. All right. So you had Israelites that was faking the funk. Swearing by the Lord, but really deep down, they were serving Molech. And you got Israelites in that same spirit today. And there's a star that's actually tied to Molech. But that's another lesson for another day. Now let's continue in verse 6. And them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired of him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord Yahweh, for the day of Yahweh is at hand. Which shows you that this still applies here in these last days too. Now, this was a judgment that was given unto Jerusalem based on the wickedness that was done. And you can read about that judgment in books like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zephaniah, and so forth, how Jerusalem was burned with fire. Okay? But again, those of us that are in the loop definitely know that there are dualities pertaining to these precepts here. And as I quoted earlier, the thing that is, is the thing, the thing that hath been, is that which shall be. Okay? So just as this was directed toward jake performing wickedness worshiping idols back then that applies here today now let's continue to read and it says and them that are turned back from the lord and those that have not sought the lord nor inquired of him and one way you start with that is the name all right you can't inquire of the lord truly without having the proper name and there's a whole legacy and understanding and reputation that's tied to that name which is only 
truly revealed unto the elect but it starts with understanding that name now when we continue in verse 7 hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord Yahweh for the day of Yahweh is at hand for Yahweh hath prepared a sacrifice he also bid he also bid his guests and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will also punish the princes and the king's children and all that are clothed with strange apparel you see that strange apparel and that strange apparel seems to be a very heavy argument here in today's time now I'm not saying necessarily the strange apparel is talking about the fancy garments that they're gloating in today but I'm going into the spirit that's tied with that all right you had Jake back then that that when they served idols served themselves and such it was always an apparel that was tied to that and that apparel was always uh, esteemed very high you even have that account in the book of judges where you had um Achan I'm glad I just remembered this actually but you had Achan which is translated to trouble all right and he ended up finding a Babylonian garment and hiding it in the earth when the Lord commanded us not to take none of that stuff that belonged to the heathen and that's when we were conquering and raiding those different areas in the land of canaan all right this is under the this is under the influence of joshua when the armies of israel crossed over the uh the jordan river and invaded the promised land and we took it through the holy spirit we took it all right but we were supposed to get rid of those idols the heathen was worshiping and such but you had israelites that didn't take heed to what the Lord was saying and Achan being an example was one that took a Babylonian garment and after that Babylonian garment was taken we started dying off in the wars didn't know what was going on until the Lord revealed that that nigga took that garment and it's a very terrible story when you read about it because what was commanded him and his wife his, his family his infants they all had to get put to death based on the actions that that man did which shows you how the Lord judges and just as that happened back then I mean the Lord is gonna do it all over again today all right you got a lot of Jake's that are out here that are leading a lot of people to death as our Lord Yahweh Shai said in Matthew the 23rd chapter when the blind shall lead the blind they all shall fall into a ditch all right now I don't want to veer off too far but I brought up that example going into the lengths and measures that Jake would go for that drip or that garment all right and ultimately how a lot of these garments were tied to idol worship just as that Babylonian garment that Achan took was tied to the gods of Babylon all right so I'm just using that example to show forth or bring out the pattern of this okay and we even have it here today all right you got the Freemasons they always have the garment these different secret societies when you do see little pictures leaked or certain shows and such make mockery of those real societies that are out there it's always some type of mystic ominous garment and such that's tied to it all right and again that goes back to the works that are the practices that are tied to uh, idol worship and you even have the example in the book of Genesis the third chapter and I'm gonna bring this out in verse 7 and when you read this this is going into the judgment that the Lord had given for those that were built this whole chapter is the judgment that's given unto the serpent for beguiling Eve, which ultimately caused the fall of humanity. And that judgment of that serpent is coming to pass here within these last days as well, just to put that out there. There's been tons of lessons going into that. Okay, that judgment wasn't fully set to, to come to pass around the time of Genesis 3. Okay, through a dispensation of time, these things had to play out. All right, but there's a judgment that's given unto the serpent there's a judgment that's given unto the woman and there's a judgment that's ultimately given unto the sons of man or the sons of adam now ultimately we got kicked out of the garden and such but before the judgment was set forth you had the sin that took place and again when you read genesis when moses gave us the book of genesis through the spirit of the lord one thing we have to understand is that this is a long period of time that's compiled in one book all right that six day process of creation and the seventh day the lord rested was a process of seven thousand years and within that time period all right it focuses more so on the end when the end of that period when adam came 
and his sons came we can't read it and think that this all just happened simultaneously i mean it happened simultaneously through dispensation of time but y'all know what i mean it didn't happen like dominoes falling these things took time okay adam lived very old before he gave up the ghost i believe he was 931 years old which uh, i believe makes him the second or third oldest person to ever be recorded to exist okay so when you read this in genesis chapter 3 this is a dispensation of time of what took place all right one sec <coughs> excuse me so this is the book of genesis chapter 3 verse 6 and it says and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and this is the tree of knowledge which ultimately is going into a source of information that she received that she wasn't supposed to all right she delved into idol worship now when you go into trees trees back then could represent people all right they could represent then you got scriptures what actually represent trees they can represent sources of knowledge but ultimately right here this is going into eve partaking in a philosophy that she shouldn't have she wasn't supposed to from a nation that wish she wasn't supposed to okay and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise all right and that's wise to do evil okay wisdom doesn't always mean something good but wisdom can be evil too you got evil wisdom that are out there all right she took up the fruit thereof and did eat and this doesn't mean that she actually ate the fruit but this is going into philosophy something that she was not supposed to be indulging in or doing or taking all right just as a quick precept this is the book of colossians chapter 2 verse 21 it says touch not taste not handle not which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men which things have indeed shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh so you got a wisdom out there that's meant to satisfy the flesh and cater to the flesh and that's tied to other idols that's tied to idols all right and here in colossians 2 and 21 it mentions touch not taste not nor handle not so here the apostle paul is clearly not telling the church you know what i'm saying uh, in a physical taste but he's going into not intermingling intermingling with rudiments of the world that are tied to idols okay one thing when you read the bible you got to understand eastern speaking especially ancient oriental eastern speaking there's a lot of phrases a lot of sayings a lot of words that are perceived today to be something else through this new speech that's been created all right but back then our forefathers had a bow uh, uh, excuse me i'm sorry a very poetic way of saying things just as music here today it's a lot of metaphors that are within our culture and when it's translated from hebrew going from greek being translated to english it makes sense why you have certain other words that are there all right which ultimately is meant for those to really receive it who was meant to receive it but here's a clear example that the apostle paul is going into how rudiments of the world idols okay disobeying the ways of the heavenly father is liking unto something that you can taste to eat so jumping back to where i left off at in the book of um, genesis the third chapter in the sixth verse it says and they did eat and gave all she did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat so they partook within the philosophies which later on ultimately ushered death within the world now i'm getting to the point here in verse seven so i'm going into i went into zephaniah three i'm sorry zephaniah one the camerons those priests that was doing evil wicked works i brought up ezekiel the eighth chapter i'm showing you the pattern of rebellion that you saw in the works that was tied to it so this is genesis 3 and 7 and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew and they knew that they were naked now this has been misinterpreted that they actually <laughs> ate this fruit and looked down and realized that they actually had genitalia when that's not what it's talking about <laughs> all right this is really just going into you know being naive all right being made bare like there's plenty of scriptures that show forth the nakedness of israel and how our shame was actually seen and revealed all right and they knew it all right it says in the eyes of them both were open 
and they knew that they were naked, which again is tied to their shame. Okay? So after they were ashamed and they were naked, and it says, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now you see these fig leaves right here. It says they sewed fig leaves together. And again, you'll have modern day Christianity that'll tell you that they ended up finding out that they were naked. They had private parts. All right. And they hurried up and tried to cover themselves when that's not the case. And they'll try to bring up the example because they were pure back then before they ate of the fruit. And they didn't have no need to cover themselves up because they were pure. And that's a popular argument that they always make. But then you have examples of the angels coming down and speaking to individuals. All right. And it always mentions these angels being clothed in some type of linen or looking like a man. All right. You never have an angel descend down you know naked and again i'm just using this example because they'll go into how you know they were pure at first and when they sinned they realized they were impure so they covered themselves and they try to tie pureness you know to, to the being innocent you know not knowing you know tying that nakedness with it and i just use the argument that what well, the angels are more pure more pure than anything they've never sinned but when they come down they don't come down like that okay so it's just an asinine argument which really goes back to different theologies and different so-called, uh, you know, different religions and philosophies back then. But naturally, when you read this with understanding, all right, they were naked. Their shame was exposed and they started doing works and practices that was tied to idolatry. All right. It says, and she took the fruit thereof and did eat and also gave unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. OK, and again, this is going into garment garments that's tied to the works of the heathen, the gods of the heathen. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of day, which this is really going into the prophets. All right. This is really going into the prophets. There were prophets. That existed back then as well again this was a dispensation of time all right this ain't just like they just sinned immediately and just this happened all right this is dual dispensation of time kind of picture uh solomon's reign he reigned for quite some time and he ended up going off and um uh, fulfilling abomination and that wasn't just within a span of a week it was a long period of time where king solomon was doing that all right and we have the more detailed versions of it within the scriptures. But again, as it was said earlier, when you read Genesis, it's a very concise, very poetic, very allegorical, parabolic book. OK. And it's again, you know, if you don't have Eastern, hopefully I didn't say Western earlier if I did Salakia. But if you don't have Eastern or, or ancient Eastern Oriental understanding, a lot of this can go over your head. OK. So those fig leaves ultimately goes into, you know, the apparel that was tied to odious works. All right. And these are, again, works that the heathen do. And when you jump down in verse eight, it says and they heard the voice of the Lord God, which, again, is going into the prophets walking in the garden in the cool of day. Now, this cool of day is going into the time before judgment, the time before the judgment was given. And just to prove that, let's go to the book of uh, Nahum, the third chapter. And we're in the cool of day right now. Spiritually, this is the cool of day right now. You can still go to the store, get your groceries, even though we know things are definitely tightening up. But you can still have certain freedoms and liberties to do the things that you do. OK, and that's why a lot of the wicked are still doing wickedness because they haven't been judged yet. All right. They can still live on, do wickedness and believe that anything or nothing I'd rather say is going to happen to them. OK, and that's what the cool of day represents the time where Adam and Eve was going off. And that was before the judgment came. So this is the book of Nahum, the third chapter. And let's see here. I'm going to get to get to the point. This is the book of Nahum, chapter three. And I'm going to start at verse 15. And it says, there shall the fire devour thee. And this is going into the judgment of Nineveh, which Nineveh, Nineveh, can spiritually represent Babylon or America here today in these last days. So just as this judgment was given unto Nineveh, which was a wicked kingdom ran by wicked heathen that was doing wickedness, the Lord eventually judged them. Okay. 
he's going to judge this place. Now it says in Nahum 3 and 15, There shall the fire devour thee, the sword shall cut thee off, it shall eat thee up like the canker worm. Make thyself many as the canker worm, make thyself many as the locusts. Thou hast multiplied thy merchants above the stars of heaven. The canker word, I'm sorry, the canker worm spoileth and flyeth away. Now this is the point. Thy crowned are the locusts. So here it's going into the judgment of the locusts. And he's mentioning the locusts being the crowns, like the princes or the nobles. And thy captains as the great grasshoppers, which camp in the hedges in the cold day. All right, so you see that. So you have in the time before the judgment, all right, the crowned and the captains, and they camp, because again, camp represents resting in the hedges in the cool day or the cold day. But when the sun ariseth, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. And this is an allegory until when the judgment takes place. All right, the scriptures even calls Yahweh Shai the son of righteousness. And when Yahweh Shai makes his coming with the angels, all wickedness is going to flee away. But before that judgment takes place, what happens? They rest in the cool of day. All right. And again, hey, the scripture says it in Ecclesiastes, the eighth chapter. Okay. It uh, makes mention um, though sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, it is fully set in the hearts of the sons of men to do evil. And all this is tied to the cold day or the cool of day. All right. Back in Zephaniah, the first chapter, when I read the judgment of the Camerons, the reason why they was able to do that and wear the strange apparel is because it was tied to the cool of day before judgment hit. All right. Hey, when the Lord sent the Babylonians to seize Jerusalem, that was because Jake was being wicked. But that started with their priesthood, with their leaders, their captains, their nobles. As it's written of in Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, the 10th chapter, it goes into how the king is. So are his officers and those people that are under them. All right, so they erred greatly and they had time to err, but eventually that judgment came and the Lord sent that judgment. All right, so going back to the book of um, Genesis, the third chapter, it makes mention that they heard the voice of the Lord in the cool of day. All right, and again, in today's cool of day right now, the voice of the Lord is speaking. The prophets are out speaking. Back then in ancient Nineveh, who was sent out there to prophesy against it? Jonah. And you had other prophets back then as well. There have always been prophets since the beginning of time. Okay, even in the time of Adam. So the voice of the Lord was speaking in that day because they was going off. And Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Most High among the trees of the garden. And these trees represent people, nations. Okay, so in the midst of that, you know, they they hid among them, was following their gods, was going off, and eventually the judgment came. And it says, And Yahweh, the Lord, really, yeah, Yahweh Allahim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I had heard thy voice in the garden and was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, and again, it just went into the whole allegory that that's going into. All right. And he said, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I have commanded thee that thou shouldn't eat? All right, so their innocence was stripped. Instead of understanding one way, which is really that breath that was given unto Adam, which is the true knowledge, they delved, all right, or partaken within other philosophies. Okay? Again, they weren't, they weren't actually naked. They weren't actually physically naked. Their shame was seen. They got involved and, da and dabbled into things they wasn't supposed to and again I, you know that was the you have the whole genesis 3 breakdown but i named the wanted to use that example going into you know the idol the, the idolatrous works and how there are practices tied to it and even a lot of those practices go into the apparel you know so watch out for a flashy garment watch out for the extra stuff the extra gimmicks the lord's not with that and just before he brought the judgment all right, in the cool of day, you had the gimmicks that existed. People was able to do what the heck they wanted, but eventually the judgment came. All right, and you add those examples of those patterns of those examples back then, and it's the same concept here today. That's why you're seeing exactly what you're seeing here today. The groups fighting, Jake being bugged out, worshiping themselves on a whole other manner they've never done before. All right, 
it's easy to get irritated and upset when we see these things and it's rightfully so because that's our zeal but ultimately in the grand scheme of things they're falling into judgment <laughs> that's why nate rode in there on that horse that's what her passover was nothing but glorifying nate all right that's why isupk and such can say john the baptist ain't in the truth that's why you got groups that are out there that are saying you know the apostle paul was wrong on certain things the list goes on and on and on all right jake has been bewitched and they're saying these things being deceived thinking they're right ultimately for them to fall into a snare but again they can do these things because they have liberty to do so all right that's just written up in second ezra okay and they, they're gonna be destroyed within their liberty at least they repent so i'm gonna end it off on that hopefully this was edifying i want to give all praise all honor and all glory to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem rakakodash double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone Peace, blessing, and many salutations unto you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.